All righty. Okay, looks like we're live. Okay. Also, um, if you guys hear any sounds of the city, I'm I'm living in Manhattan now, so there's just there might be some ambient sound leaking in here and there. Um, but anyway, hello guys. I'm Gabriel Quinn. Uh, I am a concept artist. Uh, I also do viz dev work and mostly character design, but. Um, I also do some keyframe painting and story work and all that fun stuff. So that's what I'm going to be doing today. Uh, so uh, returning viewers, I don't know if returning viewers have even seen this work. Um, it's possible I, I touched on it briefly in the past, but um, this is work done for a character I designed a while ago. You know, he's kind of got a few names I've had for him. He's this kind of like goblin character, like a, what's the term, like a half goblin um sort of like that classic trope of uh like oh you don't belong here you shouldn't be in the army you shouldn't be a knight but he's the only one who can wield the demon blade that is this you know uh ancient blade that no one no man can wield you know it, it'll suck the life right out of him but because he's part goblin you know he can he can withstand it so he can kind of turn the tide in battle that's like a quick abbreviation of what we're working on today so we're working on these paintings i've developed the top one gosh quite a lot over the over the years i guess um or maybe a couple years. I'm not, I don't really remember how long I've been working on this, <laughs> but I haven't really been able to call it done. So uh, really, really pushing it here, wanting to resolve these. So I figured I'd pull it up on stream and work on it for, you know, hour and a half, hour, and we'll see. But um, yeah, welcome to the stream. So gosh, this is stream number 64. That's pretty crazy. Uh, and we're, we're back at it again after a bit of a break. So for those of you who caught the last stream, I talked about it a bit. And, um, for those of you who are like new viewers or coming to this, you know, brand new, uh, we just kind of talk about character design. We talk about concept art. Most of all, we talk about story. Uh, and it's kind of that sort of interactive stream where anyone can ask any question they want and I'll answer and I'll talk through some stuff. Um, but yeah, I guess a bit of housekeeping first. I just want to say a big thank you to all the patrons. You guys absolutely rock. Uh, you're the best. I couldn't do this without you. I'm so grateful for you guys. Um, and uh, yeah, if you're curious about the Patreon, you can check it out in the description. You get access to my Discord if you join at the Scout tier. And on the Discord, we do character design challenges and uh, world building projects and really cool stuff. So yeah, if you want some kind of art community stuff in a closed group that's very focused, it's a great place for that. So let's jump into it. So for this image, you know, I've been working on this for a while and this kind of comes with uh, a few other things I'm working on right now. So I've kind of got, I'm trying to boil down some of my work into about 15 pages that I can say like, all right, this is my definitive portfolio for now. This is my stuff that I'm showing right now. So I've got a few other kind of keyframes or a few other images I'm working on. Um, this guy I've worked on for a while from an old art station challenge and I'm developing another keyframe for him. Um, and I was talking about this painting with, uh, with, uh, Zach Retz recently. And, you know, he gave me the suggestion of maybe thinking about the possible lead up to the shot, uh, could be more interesting or kind of like multiple views of the shot could be more interesting and interest. And strangely enough, you know, I was working on, um, this piece next, which was kind of like, you know, four shots from a supposed sequence of kind of like you know, the lead up to the battle, then the the split second before the armies clash, right, and slam into each other. And then we've got um we've got the kind of really intense moment where there's all this movement and he's slashing the demon sword and it's causing these crazy streaks and stuff. And then you have kind of the aftermath of the battle, which is just, you know, of course like uh dawn dawn has broken or day it's kind of daybreak, you know, where the sun's just peeling over the horizon. Um and you can kind of see there's only a few soldiers left. And, you know, thanks to our thanks to our goblin knight, you know, more survived than would have. And they were able to claim the victory when normally they probably would have been defeated. So once again, um, he kind of survives and lives, but is probably unappreciated. All right. I also got to remember to breathe. <laughs> I always forget to breathe on stream, man. Just a nonstop flow of information. And boy, boy, can I talk. So, you know, I can just talk and talk forever. So there you go. But um, let's say hi to the chat. Sorry for the long intro there, but uh, oh, we got Ryan. Let's go. Ryan can't stay, but he's going to drop in and say hi. What up, Ryan? Motive is here. Says hi, chat. What up, Motive? Mo.tiv. Let's go. And Nabs is also here. Amazing. And Brahim Designs is here too. Hello, hello. Awesome. <laughs> Bladebeard. True. 
true 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 all right yeah welcome guys and remember if you have any questions about these images or about art in general or something you can always ask so you know i've gotten to the stage of these images where you know i've kind of like lost all the layers and we're just kind of working flat so i really am just sort of building on top of um building on top of what i had before and all that stuff and i'm trying to create some more visual uh interest i guess some more energy so i'm thinking like what what can i hit with light where can i sort of um build in that uh that sense of depth i feel like there's maybe a bit of a gap in between our our subject character here and the kind of two sides that are around i'm thinking i maybe want to make it almost a little bit more claustrophobic like you know he's just slipping through like these two armies are just about to slam into each other so maybe there's a bit more um foreground elements or or kind of mid mid ground elements i guess that are playing into this here and we can kind of add those in as we go uh, and that'll kind of give us the information that we can then sort of make for for these other images as this is kind of a placeholder scribble here and this one's kind of you know getting close to being done i'm not going to overdevelop this too much these are more kind of supportive images uh motive says i'm hoop from the server oh welcome hoop let's go let's go let's go awesome heck yeah dude shout out to the discord community you guys are awesome you guys are great making great work great attitudes improving a lot it's really great to see so yeah, let's think about this. So one thing I've added already is kind of this sort of sheen, you know, I've brought in a bit more light here and I'm kind of back and forth on it. Like, do I like this? Do I not like this? You know, cause this, this is kind of nice, you know, having the, the, the main kind of source of light just kind of bouncing off of the subject, uh, just in general. Um, and I've used motion blur a lot in the background. Like when making this image, when compositing this image, I use blur a lot, motion blur. And I feel like Gaussian blur and motion blur. It's really going to help us here. Um, the effect we're going for is we want the camera to be tracking with the character. So that could mean that maybe we even uh, blur out the sword a little bit, like him pulling out the sword is happening like in motion. So maybe we almost want to create some some drag or some confusion there. Like we want the camera to be following the main the main character here. And if you guys know anything about photography or anything like that, you know that when you pan and follow a subject that you're taking photos of, everything else is in that intense motion blur. So maybe we can try some of that too. Yeah, let's give that a go, let's give that a go. So what we can do is we can kind of cut out the subject here. And again, we're doing a lot of these edits kind of quick and dirty, um, not caring too much because, I mean, really in production, it's, it's gonna kind of be that way as well. You're not really going to have a whole lot of time to uh, make everything super perfect. But for this image, because it's, uh, it's ours and it's kind of just for my portfolio and everything, like we can we can afford to sort of, you know, work a little bit messy, I guess. We're not handing these PSDs over to anybody. So let's see here. We can create a copy of this. And then one thing we can try to do is... um we can let's see motion blur yeah so even that already you know using this kind of uh motion blur here we can start to develop and I'll, I'll pull this in um so you guys can see what we're doing uh we're using this is a feature of photoshop we're using the kind of angle tool we want it to be pretty much in alignment with the uh with the sword here and the the blur effect that i just chose here it's way too intense so we want to turn down the distance a lot right we want it to be kind of going but not going too fast so we have this kind of crystal sharp image here of him pulling out the sword like that you know you can almost hear it like the it's that that demonic blade right it's going like wrong, like pulling out of the pulling out of the sheath uh or the scabbard rather um, and we want it to just kind of have that ripping feeling, right? And so what we can do is we can add in some motion blur and we can kind of like sort of um, work with the under layer and paint on top to kind of create more of the effect that we see on the bottom image where we still see some of that, you know, like a non blurred out uh, subject too. Um, also, uh, we got the two time in the chat. What up, Lashy? Long time no see, brother. Appreciate you, man. Um, and uh ooh, Dibuyante Mario says, I can really feel all of that. That's great. So glad. Yeah. So you want to have that energy, you know, that like ring, you know, ring. You know, like I want that blade to have that intensity, you know, that feeling. So let's see what we got going on here. 
Um, so yeah, you kind of, what you want in your images, just in general as an artist, is this is kind of my philosophy. You really want clarity, right? And clarity can be found through composition. It can be found through detail. It can be found through rendering. It can be found through through gesture. But clarity, um, it's not limited just to detail or sharpness or, you know, kind of how rendered you go. Clarity is more the 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 audience understands the image like they really understand the image so that's kind of what we're trying to find here we're trying to find uh that clarity of what's happening in this image what is really going on here um and that's not necessarily again like subject to sort of a gosh what's the term like that's not really um limited to rendering or clarity because you know adding in that motion blur one thing we lose is we lose that that you know kind of clarity on a lot of these elements and that's something that maybe i would be a little bit more attached to in the past but now that i'm adding this in here you know i'm really feeling that like you know swing kind of uh energy so i really want to keep that um but that being said we can sort of cheat right because we're we're artists you know we're not uh we're not beholden to anyone really um so i'm going to copy this blurred layer over so we just have kind of a um a extra version of it i guess <laughs> and for the color i'll just mark it as uh green just so we have it as like a save for later or i'll mark it as red that's what i marked the other save for later's as so we'll mark it as red um so we just know that's what that is and then for the actual blurred layer, what we can do is we can start to, you know, maybe kind of like remove some of these elements, you know, make sure some of that clarity comes through. I really like the green designs on the blade. So we want to have that kind of uh, clarity there of it pulling out, ripping out. Maybe we even want those uh, those green elements to almost feel like, you know, they're they're ripping out of the blade almost. Like I want it to feel like, like um, symbolic kind of... Uh, shapes or almost like calligraphy of a of another world right that we don't understand um <laughs> lashy says man i miss these streams <laughs> dude me too man I'm so glad i'm back at it yeah you know i mentioned in the last stream that i uh i held off from streaming because i had camera issues i had a lot of, of really annoying camera issues uh if any of you guys know anyone who works at sony if you guys could tell them to update their imaging edge webcam driver <laughs> please update your imaging edge webcam driver oh gosh you know the amount i paid for that camera and their drivers don't even work it's just unreal man like what the heck anyway salt aside salt aside um i i held off from streaming because i was like oh gosh no i really need uh, i really need to have my camera on and all of that stuff you know people know my face and everything uh but i i trust you guys will give me a break for a little bit here while i don't have my camera <laughs> you can just imagine my bearded face uh beard be st staring back at you Shwing. all right that's adding a lot of distraction that i don't like uh what i was maybe gonna try is um do some do some blur on this too i was gonna maybe try A more intense blur on this so it's a little bit more kind of like and actually that looks kind of sick here let's see let's set this to like a maybe a lighting mode maybe like a no not an overlay no i think just normal and then we'll just kind of fade it out a little bit yeah, because I like that. That looks that looks kind of cool now that I added that in there. Zwing. Zwing. Uh, but we also don't want to lose that really intense, beautiful lighting. So I'm going to grab my brush here, maybe my like fun sketch brush. We'll jump in here. Oh, Hoop says maybe some green embers. You know, I was thinking about that. I had more embers in a in a previous version, so I think maybe uh, it's 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 worth kind of exploring. You know, that kind of uh, you know, almost like you know, slag like that kind of look of a uh, metal slag like ripping off of a blade as as it um as it like heats up or or something like that. Like I kind of want to have that metallic slag, you know, flying off the blade. Like a, it's such a cool concept. 
Mario says, we missed that circle. <laughs> so interesting. Um, <laughs> yeah, the little circle camera. Cool, 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 cool. Um, Mario also asks, have you ever been interested in geometry, fractals, etc.? I mean, you know, I think I'm interested in fractals to the degree that anyone who appreciates nature appreciates fractals. So, you know, I really love the idea of um, how trees are fractals and kind of the cell, the structure of like cells and atoms mirror how the uni our universe, material universe operates. Um, you know, I'm quite a spiritual person. So I, I really, really uh, am humble to that stuff. I really love that stuff. And I think that fractals are a great example that the, that at least for me, like some things are true. Like I really believe that some things are true and uh, the kind of logic of, of fractals, like the kind of, I don't know, you know, it's, um, it reminds me of that philosophical idea of like that if you can't make it into a law, then you shouldn't really do it. So like the idea that something scales, right? So if you, if you have like a white lie or if you, if you lie for personal gain, gain like if everybody did that and it was a rule the world wouldn't function at all so it's probably not a moral thing to do and i like being humble to that kind of logic right uh so i feel like fractals are almost a proof of that logic strangely enough that's kind of how it reads to me um but yeah i, I really love that stuff how like neurons work or like you look at how um you know, mycelium speaks through uh, roots of trees. So then you look at how the brain's connections work and it's it's almost no different. It's kind of like, you know, that that sort of expression of, of logic. It's inescapable and it's deep and powerful. So yeah, I do, I do like fractals to answer your question. Um, cool, cool, cool. So I see some people hopped in the chat uh, or hopped into the viewing. Um, just want to say welcome. You guys are awesome. And if you have any questions about art, about life, like I'm, I'm here to talk. And uh, in terms of scheduling, gosh, how much time do I have? I have like, I think in between, in between like 40 minutes to like an hour probably to hang out here with you guys. I don't know if this would be catching the light. Is that helpful compositionally if that's catching light? Probably not, eh? Yeah, probably not. Maybe if it was like spilling over the back. So like the back collar was catching some rim light here. That would be helpful to kind of frame out our boy. So, you know, I had um, I had a couple names for this character. For a while, I was calling him Sir Frederick because um, it was kind of, you know, noble and all of that stuff. And then I came up with this name later on that was more metaphorical, um, like uh, kind of like it was based on some Celtic names. I was going to call him Kaith Duane the Cursed because that's just like so sweet, like and it kind of just like means, you know, he's like a cursed warrior, like of the battlefield, um, which I thought was so cool. So I'm not 100 percent sure which name I should go for. Uh, maybe you guys can help me with that. I don't know um and also with the eyes you know i'm still trying to figure out the eyes let's see here because i posted this character a while ago um i posted him <laughs> one of the few posts i've made on art station gosh I, i'm so bad at posting on art station i really need to do it more um but yeah that he was one of the few characters i actually posted on art station um maybe i can pull up the old character sheet or something um noise tune asks a question very interesting question in the chat says was your family supportive of your art pursuit like in the beginning stages well you know i have a very unconventional path when it comes to art because most people in my family are artists um and it's kind of a strange double-edged sword because there's you know um, kind of successes and failures in my family, people who pursued art very successfully and people who pursued art and weren't quite able to make it happen for themselves, uh, either by circumstances under their control or out of their control, whatever you, whatever you really want to call it. So, you know, I've seen the extremes of uh, success and of, I mean, failure isn't the right word. I think I've seen the, the successful resolution and the lack of resolution of an artistic practice in my family. I'll, we'll, we'll say that just because I think it makes more sense. Um, and so when I was getting into art, there was a lot of skepticism because 
my family knows it's possible to make it as an artist, um, but they also know that it's very challenging and that sometimes uh, through, call it bad luck, chance, whatever, um, you can have a really rough go of it. And maybe the thing that you're pursuing doesn't actually necessarily resolve. Um, but there's one thing that I know is true in myself, which is that if you fully dedicate yourself to something, like really fully dedicate it, and you say to yourself, you know, I am so-and-so, and you say your name, and you say, and I am an artist, I create beautiful images, and I seek to be a master of my craft, then, you know, not much can really go wrong in that pursuit. Well, I mean, if, I shouldn't say that, you know, I don't want to give anybody <laughs> any ideas that, you know, you're going to succeed no matter what, but um, I feel like that kind of uh, tenacity is necessary. And I had that tenacity. And I think because of that, I had that tenacity, my um, family was more supportive. So for context, my dad is an abstract painter and my grandfather was actually an art director back in the day for Jim Henson Company. So he worked with the Muppets, designing Muppets, designing their whole kind of style and all that stuff. Uh, his name is Michael K. Frith. You can actually find his Wikipedia page. He's a cool guy. Um, and I'm staying with him right now, actually. So um you know, I had successful artists in my family when I was growing up, so I knew it was possible. But there's also this interesting, you know, pressure of, uh, of <laughs> like, oh, you know, uh, your your grandfather was an artist and blah, 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 blah. And so, you know, people have even heightened expectations of yourself. So even for me, like if even if I, you know, uh, succeed to a high degree, maybe there's something there about, you know, well, you know, I should be doing more. I should be something, something, something. Um, so it's kind of like, uh, oh gosh, I'm always hesitant to talk about that stuff because people are always so, um, or my experience has kind of been like, uh, like, <laughs> oh, that's so amazing. That's so amazing. That's so amazing. And it is, it's fantastic, but you know, it does come with its, its own kind of, uh, its own unique brand of imposter syndrome. I'll just say that. Um, so there's kind of a, an added heightened sense of, you know, if, if, if you don't succeed as an artist, it's not just, oh man, that's too bad. It's kind of like, damn, you didn't succeed in as, a, as an artist and that's your family's legacy. Like that's kind of crazy. So <laughs> there's something there. Uh, what, up, what up, Abe and Game Lord. Welcome guys. Welcome guys. Um, Susie J says, hi, awesome to catch another live stream. Happy to see you streaming again. Yeah, I'm looking to make these streams much more regular. Um, and, you know, I think I want to keep them about to an hour, maybe an hour and a half. And you can kind of think about it like is your maybe like daily art podcast or something fun, you know, keeps me active, keeps me talking to you guys, being open about art. And uh, you have a chance to talk to an artist about whatever you want. Um, but yeah, no, my, my family was supportive. But you know what? You know what I will say is that there's something about this kind of support, right? So if someone says you're never going to make it, you know, then you kind of, um, you can rail against that. You can say, no, I'm going to, I'm going to do it my way. I can, I can succeed. I can, I can push it. I can do it, you know, and there's almost this sense of kind of this underdog mentality, um, that you have. Um, and, when you have it's not the opposite it's kind of like oh yeah no i mean you're you know i mean kind of <laughs> the narrative around my work kind of goes like oh no i mean your work is really good like of course you'll make it you know and it's kind of like this interesting um this is interesting energy there of like gosh if i don't make it then i'm just like really dumb or something you know what i mean like there's that element of like gosh you know i was listening to uh, Dr. K on the healthygamer.gg YouTube channel. I don't know if you guys know Dr. K, but uh, um, I mean, no one on YouTube should be taken as gospel, right? And uh, even if you're like a clinical uh, psychiatrist uh, that went to Harvard like he did, like you still should always, you know, uh, keep your wits about you and all that stuff. However, a lot of the information he shares has been hugely uh, helpful to me. Um, and being raised in an artist family, like a very talented artist family, it's like, there's so much pressure that's unspoken. There's so much pressure and expectation. And when you create something really spectacular, it's kind of almost met with just like kind of like a silent approval of like, oh yeah, okay, great. So you're, you're doing it. Good. Yeah, that's good. Um, and it's kind of just like an acknowledgement that it's like, oh yeah, you're okay. So you're, you're, you're making your way. Nice. It's not like, 
oh my gosh, you know, you just crafted an image with light and energy and motion and narrative and story and it's successful and it's got energy and it's in the, you know, your mark making is unique and this and that. It's none of that stuff. You know, it's just kind of like uh, an acknowledgement of, um, of, oh yeah, okay, great. Yeah, great. So I, it's hard for me to talk about, you know, family supporting my work because they're so supportive. Um, of course they're so supportive, but my capacity to feel that support is a little bit sometimes under duress uh, because of that strange, unique dynamic. And I always feel like I'm ill-equipped to answer those questions or when people are like, what do you do if your family's unsupportive or what do you do if this, this and that? Because, you know, my situation is quite unique in that way. And it's almost like I, I feel like I shouldn't say anything because on the one hand, I have it so great that my family are all artists. And on the other hand, it's just such a unique such a unique pressure and like a, again, a unique brand of imposter syndrome um, because, you know, I can get as good as I want, you know, I can become, you know, the best artist of my generation, but you know, I'll never be art director of the Muppets or blah, 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 blah. You know what I mean? Like there's something, there's something there. Um, and I don't talk about that really with anybody, to be honest. So this is the, this is the first time I've, uh, I've, I've really been open about that side of things on stream. And, you know, I hope you guys are, uh, I would ask you to be kind of, you know, I guess be like, be, be, be respectful, I suppose, or I don't really know what I'm saying, but um, that's just me being completely open and honest and transparent about that. Um, and I feel like being an artist, it's already such a vulnerable thing and transparency, I feel like can only help other artists who are on the path who have questions and struggles, you know, just, just know that your own unique struggles, you, you can work through whatever struggles that you face, uh, even if it's lack of support from your family. And grass is always greener. Sometimes I almost wish like my family wasn't supportive. So I would have something to rail against and say, ha ha, I proved you wrong. But, you know, it's like proving them, proving them right about me becoming very successful as an artist is almost an expectation. So it's kind of like, if I don't do that, like if I do that, it's just a relief. It's not like a win, you know? So, so yeah. So there you go. Um, let's see what you guys say in the chat. <laughs> um noise dune says my grandma is an aggressive supporter uh but really only her um oh that's that's wonderful it's great to have it's great to have a really strong supporter that's fantastic seems j says yeah most situations come with their own set of struggles it's totally valid yeah for, for sure i appreciate that and um hoop says i feel like uh that's the vibe of a that's the vibe of a pessimist is either always right or pleasantly surprised like if someone preying on your downfall if someone is preying on your downfall, you either prove them right or overcome it. True, true. If you have supporters, you risk letting them down. Yeah, yeah, there's something to that, man, for sure. Noisting says, glad you, glad you talked about it. Yeah, me too. You know, I, I definitely don't want that to be something in my mind, right? Um, and then Kset says, hi, new viewer. That sentiment hits home really well articulated. I'm so glad it hits home, man. Um, yeah, and also like, you know, let me also say my my grandparents are the best. They they have supported me through so much that my parents couldn't, you know? Um and they've been there for me in ways that uh I can't really even express. So like I love my grandparents. And they're they're legends, man. Like, you know, so my grandfather was an art director for Jim Henson Company, worked on so many amazing things and my grandmother was a was a puppeteer, a very very successful puppeteer. She puppeteered Kira in uh, The Dark Crystal and um she also puppeteered The Right Hand of Yoda in Empire Strikes Back. That's a fun story. Um Yeah, oh Hoop says going to head off and bake some monkey bread. Nice. Awesome. Yeah, glad glad you made it in here Hoop. That's great. Um, but yeah, you know, so my grandparents are hugely accomplished and it's so interesting because their careers happened in such this unique time, you know, this just unique time in history um, when there was all this burgeoning new technology, you know, like uh, with like yeah, the world of television and new programming and all of that stuff. And they just really had amazing careers. And, you know, times are different now. Saturation's different. You know, you can't. <laughs> You don't walk into Disney and say, hey, I want to be an artist. And they're like, oh, great. We'll train you. <laughs> it's like that doesn't really exist anymore. So I can't really live my life like they lived their lives. You know what I mean? It's just a different time. And that's not to downplay their success. You know, they worked incredibly hard and did such incredible work. Um, but yeah, I know it's unique. It's unique. But yeah, my family was always supportive. But I think my biggest enemy is definitely myself when it comes to... Um, 
recognizing my own capacity and, you know, pushing myself to achieve what I know I can't achieve. There's always that strange uh, middle ground or that strange sense of self-sabotage that lingers there once in a while. Um, but yeah, good, good, I think, to talk about once in a while. But if you focus on it too much, I think it'll just destroy you, eh? Uh, so good to not focus on too much. Uh, Moskin, welcome Moskin, says, I'm kind of struggling with getting my digital sketches to feel natural or like traditional. They kind of look stiff or forced. Um, I don't know what to call it. Got to practice more. But yeah, that could be a combination of a few things. One one element is definitely um, that you probably are not used to working on glass, or I don't know what kind of tablet you have, but you're probably not used to working on glass, you know, so your hand doesn't have natural control yet. So on paper, you have a lot more control because the resistance of the paper is um, allowing you to do much straighter lines. And on a digital platform, you may have a lot more difficulty um, hitting straighter lines. There's multiple solutions to this. One, like you said, is practice. So you get more comfortable with your motor skills on a glass surface. Uh, the other thing is you want to, or you could opt to turn smoothing on a little bit. I usually keep smoothing at 0%. Um, and that's just kind of my own preference. But um but yeah, it's uh, it's it's something that um, you can kind of find your own rhythm for, I guess, uh, with what you want to do. The the one thing about choosing smoothing earlier is that you're likely going to be dependent on it for the entirety of your art career. So it's kind of like, you know, I know plenty of artists who use smoothing to great success, and that's awesome. Uh, for me personally, I try to I try to avoid it generally, just because I'd rather build more control than uh, uh, dependency, but. Some people have like handshakes or issues that they can't overcome and just working digitally is just such a challenge for them because of that. So I think that, you know, those people really benefit from being able to use smoothing. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's actually like a lot of built-in smoothing to certain apps that um, you don't notice. Like if you use like Magma Art, like the smoothing's pretty high on that. So people are like, whoa, like my drawing feels so much better in Magma. And it's like, well, you know, the smoothing's super high. So maybe that's it. Um, but yeah, experiment, see what works for you. But um, sorry you're struggling with stiffness. That'll definitely remedy with time and mileage. Um, but also, yeah, through some other interventions too. Cool, cool, cool. I think the circles on this sword need to be bigger. When I designed it originally, the original sword, these were a lot more substantial. So I think I'll add in some, some width to these, you know. Then I'll kind of make them fit a little bit more later probably. But for now, I'm just going to block it in for compositional reasons, I think. Add in that kind of glint of light. It's interesting when you're blocking stuff in, when you've already developed so much of the painting, it always like looks so awkward at first until you kind of work it, work it into the design. Let's see here. Andrew Larkin says, finally, I get to catch a stream again. Yeah, buddy. Streams are back. Mixter D says, wow, welcome back. I got spoiled by seeing your stream on the regular. <laughs> yeah, man. Well, I'm, I'm back for a while. So there you go. Moskin says, thanks for the response. I really admire you. Ah, oh, dude, thank you so much. That means a lot. Really, really glad that uh, this stream is a resource for you guys. Uh, Adam Strawberry says, if you use a screenless tablet, I found that taping a piece of printer paper on top of the tablet helps me a lot when I use an Intuos. Yeah, that can be that can be really beneficial. I remember seeing that trick from Cynix way back in the day. That was crazy. Um, Noistune says, do you have a problem using a pen tablet versus a Cintiq? Dude, this is Taylor's as oldest as time, man. You know, the whole debate of pen tablet versus screen tablet. Um, I will say a surprising number of very skilled artists that I respect so much use a pen tablet. And it's like really surprising. You know, guys like Thomas Chamberlain Keen, Ahmed Alduri, all those guys, they just use pen tablet. They don't use screen tablets really at all. Um, and then I know other artists who are, you know, exclusive screen tablet people, like, you know, uh, people like, um, gosh, what's the, what's his name? Nicholas Cole, who only uses the iPad, or, you know, Maxi Lichney, who only uses the iPad. Like, there's some really fantastic artists out there that use screen tablets, too. For me, currently, with my setup, I'm partial to this old 22-inch Cintiq that I've been using for years. Um, 
it was like a weird hand-me-down situation that I came into possession of this 2013 Cintiq that still works somehow. You know, it's 1080p and resolution's terrible and the colors are, you know, <laughs> pretty rough, but I just, it's what I've been using, so <laughs> I've gotten used to it. Um, but I also use the iPad too. I do like the feeling of a, uh, of a pen tablet though, but the issue is that my art monitor currently, and don't ask me why I did this, you know, I was thinking like, oh gosh, like, I'm going to get a 32 inch monitor. Like that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get a 32 inch art monitor. And God, I don't know why I did that. Um, but when I use a pen tablet with the 32 inch monitor, um, it's just so un unwieldy because the, uh, the, um, like if I go this far on the, on the pen tablet, I go like this far on the, the big screen. So it's kind of like this weird, um, strange issue of uh i don't know what it's called it's called like um oh, i don't know the term for it but you know what i'm talking about it's like it compensates for the distance or it kind of matches the distance in a way that's kind of weird so it's it makes it kind of tough to use um but yeah anyway so that's kind of my issue i guess uh so i'm kind of stuck with this Cintiq for a while until my setup changes but i've been really thinking about switching to just laptop and intuos uh, just because my future is going to be pretty uncertain in terms of studio space and all that stuff. And even right now, it's like been really tough to get my studio kind of operational in the way that it will be supportive for my work. So I feel like, you know, pen tablet grants you a lot of freedom that screen tablets like really anchors you to a location. It demands a lot um, and uh, it kind of roots you. And it also potentially has back problems. This is like an infinite debate forever and ever and ever. All right, just doing a time check. All right, I got about you know, in between 20 and 40 minutes, I think. I'm not 100% sure if my plans later are going to be set in stone. We're going to uh, head down to the Met and check out the um, new European exhibit there that just opened up or was renewed or something. So go check out some European art. Let's see, let's see. Adam Strawberry says, another great artist that uses screenless tablet is Peter uh, Moorbacher from Angelarium. Oh, nice. Yeah, I know of Peter. We have some mutual friends, but we haven't connected. Um, yeah, there's a lot of people who swear by the by the pen tablet. And, uh, you know, I, I, I've tried to convert a few times, but again, my current my current screen situation has made it a little bit a little bit challenging to you know, make that transition. All right, let's see here. How are we feeling about this image? You know, one thing you always want to check is the values, right? So when I zoom out, the value read on the face, there's something not good here, right? And I think it's maybe I've been staring at this image for too long. I can't necessarily see uh, where the issues lie or, or where there are potential issues. So I think that, you know, there's kind of that, you know, I've been looking at it too long problem. And when I flick on the values here, there is definitely a focus. Um, around the face, but I feel like I want that focus to be much more felt and intense. So I'm thinking maybe even um, painting in some darker shadows around the eyes potentially and adding in maybe some more highlights here just to really push the push the interest around the eyes as much as possible. Really draw that attention to that spot, to that zone, making sure that like, that's the most important thing in the image is that expression, that really intense ferocious expression of charging through. Adam Strawberry says the motion blur with the sword being pulled out is super cool. Yeah, that's, you know, adding that in feel, it makes the image feel a lot stronger. I still feel like there's something missing in the image though. Uh, like, honestly, I feel like this image should be a lot more messy uh, and that I'm not really honoring the the true chaos that I'm trying to instill with the image so i think in the last phase of time maybe maybe we try to just go crazy with this image briefly like let's yeah let's let's see if we can um make something strange happen here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to group these layers copy it over uh, hit Control e flatten everything down um and what we're going to do is we're going to uh just start going crazy yeah this is going to be a test a test image i think Let's make sure we doubled it correctly. Yep. Yep, yep, yep.
Yeah, I feel like the eye, we, we lost the intensity in the eye a little bit here. I think we need to bring in the, the whites of the eye a little bit more, push that, push that intensity of kind of that, you know, yeah, showing those whites of the eye, really just showing like this is, this is an intense moment. And this character is really straining and, and charging into battle like this, you know? We'll keep pushing and pulling. And, you know, at this stage, we're really just experimenting to try and look for solutions. So we're not being precious about any of the edits we're making, you know? We just kind of wanna want to push forward. Got a blood moon. <laughs> That's so funny. Maybe I should. Maybe I should. Okay, let's see. Let's see. Let's see what we can do here. So if we really want to push this like red versus blue color and we want to have more just fill in that area, I feel like we could add in a lot more fill than fill light. So we have the the competing competing light sources, you know? Um so we're gonna kind of noise this up anyway later. So I don't really see the harm in really pushing some of these uh some of these reds maybe we keep them at like 50 percent for some areas so that it's not super like a super loud highlight you know but we also want to keep it pretty steady i guess yeah pull it pull it across this cheekbone like it's really catching on the cheekbone looking pretty cool we could also push this kind of you know pink glow on the teeth more to show it's really catching on those teeth as well yeah i'm not 100 percent sure really what i'm trying to do here but i am just kind of giving it my all and wanting to get this energy so i'm just trying stuff out here and experimenting it's interesting experimenting like live in front of people it's definitely a little bit you know actually I've, I've become quite comfortable with it yeah so then let's really just add in these these highlights where they're relevant you know like because if the light is really coming from below then let's show those plane changes uh with these different different layers of the eye right like let's really make this this lighting true for the underside of things like let's really do it and even here you know show the red under the lip oh gosh that's so intense it's pretty gaudy and value wise it's really i don't think it's not working very well <laughs> i feel like for that to work we almost maybe need the light coming from the moon to be like much more intense like almost white kind of vibe like what if we did this what if we like offset it like that because that's kind of that's potentially working right value wise that's potentially potentially doing the thing Just uh, writing currently. It's 
Okay, yeah, let's let's jump back in here. So that's one one potential option. Mm, I mean, it's feeling a little intense currently. Uh, what if we just kind of lower this in front of the other image? What does that what does that do? You know, that kind of works, and it has the glow, it has the red, and it's not as intense. Maybe maybe we go with something a little less. Mm. Oh, there's something about that intensity, though. All right, all right. Maybe the dual lighting is a bit much. But snapping back, this doesn't feel right anymore. Well, gorsh, we got ourselves in a pickle, guys. Hmm. ZV says, I like it way more now that you push the reds. Oh, gosh, yeah, it is kind of working, too. Well, let's just keep working around with it, right? So let's remove the whites we added, and, and we'll see what we can do. Because the other option is we could actually... Um, what we can do is we can return these highlighted areas more to like a mid-tone level. Not so it's equal, but it's just a little bit darker potentially. And then we could just have the rim light of the moon hitting certain areas, but not actually venturing into other... Oh, wait, yeah. No, I think, I think we found our solution here. So value-wise, what we would do is we would have that really intense... rim light but then the rest would kind of be balanced with the um the red uh and then also what we would do is yes yeah, so like these areas would probably get hit with the rim light too potentially or maybe not we could omit that or we could have it be like very faint potentially uh and then we could have this red come in you know even here to balance out this area too kind of have that universal like kind of feel right let's turn it down to 30 percent maybe paint it in here something kind of like that maybe that's a bit a bit too much there Well, we are getting closer, though. I do feel like we're getting closer to a successful image, um, kind of pushing these different areas and whatnot. And let's kind of go in and paint in some of these edges that would have a bit of a cast shadow, bevels, all that stuff, right? We want to have that in there. So we just have to make that work in a more successful way, right? That's kind of what we need to do, uh, as well as have the red now part of the part of the composition and the part of the shadows it's basically a really intense fill light on all the shadows underneath the character so you'd sort of have this really intense moment where the reds are bleeding through here right Oh, dude, okay, we're finding it. We're finding it. Heck yeah. We're actually getting somewhere here. I like this a lot. Thank you guys for bearing with me on this. And <laughs> I hope this is useful for you all uh, for learning and such. I'm really experimenting here, just trying stuff out. I'm, I wouldn't necessarily call myself a painter, right, when it comes to art. Like, it's not my forte to kind of render or do keyframes, but it's something that I'm really pushing myself in and wanting to gain a lot more skill. So it's good to have this opportunity to talk through this stuff with you guys and learn some stuff. Also the option of maybe even having some areas like really lit and having that almost that kind of white now. That's no, nope. that's pretty much all we can we can do there, eh? Oh, Salmon's here. What up, Salmon? The Baron of Bees. Been a long time. Oh, yeah. Can you make the... Can you mark the light direction? I am confused. Well, right now we're kind of, you know, figuring some stuff out, right? Because we've got the red glow of the blade, which we haven't, you know, really set in terms of any hard and fast rules here. But we've got the red glow of the blade. Um essentially illuminating what it can in the area and what we're trying is a more aggressive lighting scenario on the face where the red of the blade the glow is 
reaching up, hitting the underside of certain areas. So it wouldn't be hitting everything, but it would be hitting a lot of these under under areas. Um, and potentially even stuff like this this rim here if we wanted it to or or you know we haven't gone universal with this rule yet i think nor should we we're still trying to figure it out um, but just experimenting so if you look at kind of the past sort of uh, iteration of the image it's definitely a lot more reserved in terms of where the red is it's just kind of the bottom of the jaw and the face here and the ear uh, but not really much else. So we're experimenting with a more aggressive lighting scenario. I'm thinking probably we're going to pull it back a bit. So what I might try here is I might erase some of the more aggro side from up top, stuff like this. Just kind of keep it really subtle. Like that. So it's still reaching up onto the face here. But in a not so aggressive way. Oh, wait, that was kind of working. Just that little bit of red on the cheekbone. Hmm, yeah, okay, okay. So we're start. okay, okay, yeah. I think, I think subtle is the way to go here. Colin says live stream. It's been 84 years. It's true. Has been a while. But glad to be back. Glad to be back. Um, alrighty. Let's see. Let's see. All right, let's probably quiet the noise as well from some of the other images here. So what I'm going to do is just close this off for now. Yo, thanks, Colin. Appreciate that. Yeah, I'm thinking it's looking pretty good. Hmm. Someone says, when I close my eyes, 60% of the arm stands out as too bright. Far blown out, bright in comparison to the body in the background. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's something that, that I'm trying to figure out because, you know, when it comes to reflective materials, like metal catches light in a different way. Um, so I'm trying to explore what I could do, you know, in that area, trying to figure out, you know, what's, what's kind of worth doing, et cetera, et cetera. Here, let's see here. If we grab this bring it under here merge these guys we've got a kind of a new working format here yeah because that's feeling a little gaudy right we want it to be more subtle let's work on this a little bit more but i think we're really getting there you know definitely from the original iteration you know if you guys saw the first the first version of it uh let's see yeah this one you can see it's like a lot more clenched, lighting's a lot more stiff, the hand's a lot more stiff, like everything's just really feeling quite stiff um, versus where we're at now. It's feeling a lot more loose, energy's a lot more loose, and I think that uh, I think that there are some changes that need to happen with the arm, though, just overall, even just anatomically. I got to make some changes here because um, that's not how armor works.
also want to explore adding in some like glints into certain areas too to kind of show some material and create some value differentiation across the piece. So I'm going to explore the option of potentially having some highlights in the foreground too. Oh yeah, the light tangent. Colin just pointed this out. Yeah, that's something I want to fix later. Hmm. Yeah, here we go, dude. Yeah, so maybe like I want a little bit more of this kind of interest here. Paint it in. Hmm. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Yeah. All right. Things are starting to kind of come together here. Um, I think building in some more interest in the foreground is good. Uh, and like layering a little bit more is good too. I'm thinking also having some of these like spear shafts as well in the foreground. Cause I think that would be a really sick, um, kind of visual motif and also adding in some of the the red from down here too could help along the edge build in some more layering information and then when we eventually kind of you know blur a lot of this out with like Gaussian and motion blur then it'll kind of have that really cool feel that we like All right, we want to kind of fade it in too, so it's not like a just a line going across because it would kind of fade out as it travels far because it's it's kind of a glow with a glow. It's kind of like the reflections are going to be really intense with what's around, um, but it won't travel very far. Just kind of giving hints of light here and there that are working. Hmm. 
And then from the top side, we'll give that sort of neutral light look, I think. Cool. Oh, sorry if you guys are hearing sirens. Really apologize for that. <laughs> or actually, I don't know if any of that even comes through. There are things I also want to just add in for like energy. Oh, sick. So glad none of the background is coming through. That's awesome. Glad this mic was worth it. Jeez. Only capturing what's around. That's so good. Yeah, I think we did a foreground helmet, like a really sick foreground helmet. It's kind of blurred out a little bit. I think that'll help a ton with this image, maybe. Help or harm. Let's see. I don't think that's helping. Right, that's kind of doing something interesting. I like the kind of interplay, the kind of cross sections, the kind of rising tension of the image, you know? I'm liking it a lot. Be interested to see if I, you know, added in kind of a a streak or like something coming across here you know that was maybe catching a bit of light or something like you know what it would look like if i added that in and then obviously i would like blur it out or make it kind of fit like let's see let's see what that does there let's cut this off too Gosh, experimentation. It's always so fun to kind of see, just try new things. All right, let's blur this out.
blur it access in the foreground, and then also I think give it that motion blur to Yeah, I think that was missing for a while. Even honestly, wait, let's try some other stuff too here. Cause I think I've just, something just clicked for me. So even adding in, um, what's different about this image? Nothing. Hello? It's so weird. Oh, I see. Okay. Then let's do this. Great. This is our image so far. You know, I when I was starting this image, I really liked these elements on the side, like the night helmet and stuff. But I really think it's possible that they have to also... Um, also get phased phased into oblivion by this motion blur just to stay consistent with the image you know in any case we'll try Yeah, I think that's kind of how we're going to solve the the main composition of this image, really focusing on the the key subject here, eliminating other uh distractions and whatnot. Hmm. We'll see. Well, maybe we'll take a break from this. So see how it fits with the other images. All right, let's uh out that stuff. Nah, that's way too much. Hmm. Well, the read's definitely better. I don't know if the image is better. possible we need some like uh some overhead stuff um that's kind of framing the character more like that's possible that that's what we need but i think i'll probably do that another time i think i'm kind of burnt out work working on this for now <laughs> that's funny colin <laughs> yeah accurate image of colin Colin portrait. All right, let's see what else we can work on here. So, hmm. I was potentially gonna work on some stuff. Uh, whoa. Oh, that's unfortunate. So I had a file corruption issue on this layer. That's what I was talking about. All right, well, we'll just delete this and we'll remake it. Oh no, I need to keep it actually. Hmm. So there's a file corruption here, obviously. That's really unfortunate. But uh, it's not the end of the world, and I think I can make do with this because I have these images, the actual high res on a separate file, so I can bring those in. The only thing I don't have is the kind of sketch here, but that's super easy to get out of this, so that's fine. What else can we work on here before I go? Hmm. We can kind of push this a little bit more if we wanted to, but oh gosh, I think I'm done with images for today. I think I want to make some drawings. <laughs> Let's see. Maybe we'll work on this guy. So this is a composition I'm working on currently. This is the rough sketch. Um,
and uh it is of this kind of goblin king and then um these goblins who are carrying him and the main goblin uh with this big banner this is going to be the uh the banner image for my portfolio so when people kind of find my portfolio they find this work this will be the first thing they see so i really want it to kind of like <laughs> say what i wanted to say um and you guys know how much i love goblins so there you go so i think for this one i've gone through many iterations of what it could possibly be um and i think the next stage is possibly the line art stage but there might be some stuff i can work on here before i go to the line art stage um ah, or do i just do this on my own time this might be something i don't do on stream it's possible uh well okay let's make just like a fun sketch sketch page for fun for the last little couple minutes of the drawing let's grab a little burr. yeah let's do this i'll save that All right, let's draw something strange with, um, I'm going to use my oval sketching brush. Oh man, I've really fallen in love with this brush. I love it so much. Um, oh yeah, by the way, if you guys want my brushes, uh, they're on my, um, discord, which is like three bucks a month, uh, on Patreon. Anyone can join. It's super fun, supportive community. We do a lot of art challenges and cool stuff and, uh, anything that I have that, you guys can use i throw on there so my brushes are on there my pre-edit and then my current version they're both there uh in case you like one more than the other and you can kind of find my suite of like you know different modified brushes that i use on there for free um and then i also have a workshop it's a dragon design workshop that i did uh talking about some fundamentals of dragon design with some kind of you know, informative information on anatomy and then also some theory stuff too for designing dragons. And that's, that's on the Patreon itself. Um, and we're going to be adding more recordings of that nature to the Patreon for anybody who joins, which is going to be cool. Uh, so if you guys have any questions about dragon design, that could be a fun, um, fun lecture to watch. It's about an hour and Hey, it's only three bucks to join. Pretty good deal. But I think we're just drawing weird heads for fun now, now that I'm all warmed up. Oh yeah, it's gosh, I love this oval brush. What's cool is, you know, a lot of people who post their brushes, like oftentimes it's modifications on like other people's brushes and, you know, so that they've kind of warped for themselves or whatever, because it's much easier to make a brush with like a base of another brush, potentially, depending on what you're doing. Uh, but this one is 100% my creation, which feels really good. So it's pretty cool. Oh gosh. I'm really feeling the uh, the I haven't eaten lunch <laughs> mode right now. Should have eaten lunch, eh? But I really wanted to just get into some art today.
Let's see here. Wow, wow. All right. So we'll probably end stream pretty soon. Um, but let's make some drawings first. It amazes me that there's no background noise. It also amazes me that the connection here is stable. My gosh. I'm so glad the connection is stable. I'm so worried I wasn't going to be able to stream here. I've had such bad luck with like New York Wi-Fi stuff. I'm so glad it's stable. Yeah, one day I might talk about the use of uh, heavy blacks in, in sketching um, because it's really useful when done uh, tastefully and correctly. It can really add a sense of uh, depth and contrast to your work that you might be missing. But I feel like it's also something each artist kind of discovers in their own time when they need it, you know? I love pushed heads like this. They're so fun. I always have a lot of fun with that kind of stuff. Yeah, also any questions guys before I close up the stream a little bit? I think we all got tired at the same time. <laughs> Hmm. 
Sneezy J says the question is a little out of context, but do you have any good alternatives to Pinterest when it comes to finding references for clothing, props, etc.? Um, yeah, Pinterest becomes a bit of its own. It kind of defeats its own purpose sometimes, um, because the way its algorithm is trained is super weird, and uh, you can oftentimes find that I don't know what you're looking for is kind of what you've already seen from everyone else, or it becomes like a caricature of itself where you're not finding novel or new interesting things. Um, I would highly recommend um, it's just staying open to multiple sources. So like if you, for instance, are wanting to find some really powerful cultural reference from, for instance, a photographer, looking at their whole body of work is really helpful. Um, or if you are looking at a particular era of clothing, consider, you know, going on like the, the, the Met Museum's website and checking out everything they have from that period, you know, or the British Museum or whatever kind of museums. Like there's oftentimes kind of catalogs that you don't know about that are out there um, that are pretty darn useful. Also, the, the, I think the Met Library has PDFs. It's like online library has PDFs of like every art book they've ever had that you can kind of just download for free. That's a pretty useful web, uh, website too. Pretty useful thing for finding unique uh, publications that have unique information, obviously. So that's something you can look at whenever, I guess. Um, but yeah, those are some areas where you can find some stuff. I'm trying to think of where else. What else you could do? Um, I mean, real life is always a great asset wherever you are in life. If you have access to libraries, museums, wherever, going going to those places and checking those places out is a really great opportunity. Um, and also, you know, uh, becoming a kind of photographer of the subjects that you like too. You know, I it's a bit of a bit of a challenge to make that part of your practice, but you know, for me, I always I always. Uh, respectfully capture you know candidates of like people on the new york subway that i find really interesting and i don't really show those images to anybody and i there's they're not published anywhere but they kind of can serve as a as a bit of a inspiration for me when i'm looking for something different you know or something new so things to keep in mind but yeah once everyone kind of becomes dependent on pinterest and remember what pinterest is designed for it's you know designed for kind of like trends and finding a lot of the same thing and you know what it's feeding you is kind of what it thinks you're gonna like but you know it doesn't know who you are and again like the market for pinterest is kind of like the you know i guess typical person who like wants ideas for recipes wants ideas for furniture design wants ideas for fashion design tattoo design so it's like what it's going to feed you uh, is a lot of that weird stuff and now oh gosh unfortunately unfortunately pinterest is being invaded by ai like all other platforms it's so frustrating when you're looking for something specific and it just feeds you a bunch of ai nonsense also if you're looking for historical references pinterest can be very antagonistic to your search because oftentimes what it gives you is inauthentic cosplay information and that's all it gives you um which can be very frustrating like if you want to know anything about, you know, Nordic Viking attire, like real Nordic Viking attire, you're going to have a really hard time on Pinterest because all it's going to give you is like um, Etsy shop listings for like, you know, tunics that were not even close to being historically accurate. So there you go. Uh, Voidmade says there's also some Tumblr blogs that kind of work more like curated Pinterest boards, uh, Flabbergastron or Visual Reference, for example. That's cool. Yeah, definitely check those out. Sound really interesting. Um, Sarlacki says hi, Gabriel. What up, Sarlacki? Let's go, Sarlacki. Welcome to the chat, buddy, and welcome all new viewers. Like, I I hope you guys are doing well. <laughs> Today was definitely an interesting collection of uh topics that we spoke about. So, <laughs> hope it's been useful and comforting. So we're doing yet another old man sketch here. See what we come up with in the time that we have before I'm off to the the museum, I do say.
Yeah, dude, the AI interior designs, those are the worst. Nav says, for reference, I also think Reddit might be a good way for resources. Tie it back to like look at other photographers' galleries. Oh, yeah, for sure, for sure. That stuff is great. Man, at some point, I'm going to have to start drawing more attractive characters. I recently had a, or not so recently, but I had a, a feedback of my body of work recently. And they're like, oh, dude, like your stuff is great. But, you know, you're going to have a hard time with certain studios because, you know, they just they just want hot characters. That's like all they really want. And I'm like, gosh, I guess I'm going to have to go out of my way and really focus on that because I don't even notice I don't do it. But then when someone says like, oh, you've got no like conventionally attractive characters in your portfolio. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And then I look at this guy and it's like a super pushed, <laughs> a super pushed character. And I'm like, oh, yeah, you wouldn't see this guy in Valorant or in League or anything like this face wouldn't show up anywhere in there. You know, like they got to have a steel cut jaw and a six pack and all that crazy stuff. It's so weird, man. So weird what you have to do for games now. It's like you have to do it. They have to be like ripped and like uh super conventionally attractive and all that stuff like you know can't just have a weird guy <laughs> it's got to be like this or it's got to be a super weird guy and that's the point you can't there's no middle ground there's no unique faces in this in this industry unfortunately draw one draw a cute anime waifu heck no dude Sneezy J says, yeah, I was trying to find some spaceship interior stuff on Pinterest and AI interiors amounted to something like 80% of the results. It's so, it's so frustrating. Noy student says, they aren't as interesting to draw. I just feel like every time I go to draw a conventionally attractive face, like part of that kind of archetype of like, you know, like, oh, do, do like this version of an attractive character. I always feel like I'm just, you know, uh, man, I don't know. Like I'm, I'm pouring mud into a swamp. You know, there's art, there's enough. There's enough mud in the swamp. They don't need my mud in the swamp. You know what I mean? Like there's enough. There's enough really conventionally attractive characters out there. I just feel like I'm accomplishing nothing when I do it. But, you know, like the it's it's uh part and parcel with our industry right now, I guess. Maybe it's something we'll look back on with uh with uh some ferocious critique like in this age, people were so ignorant. All they did was this and that, and there was no room for this and no room for that, you know? Maybe we'll have the same conversation we do about other social issues as we do about the art industry right now. Who knows? What is wild, though, is that there are some studios that will give you a skin tone limit. Like, you can't go too dark. You can't go... Yeah, basically just you can't go too dark. Um, and it's super messed up. Like they literally give you a skin tone limit and like with certain ethnicities, like you just can't explore at all. Like it's just very like do this attractive version of this ethnicity, even if it's not authentic to what um, that culture thinks is attractive and interesting and compelling. So it's just, it's just weird. Sometimes there's some weird stuff. I've been pretty lucky though, to work with some great clients that really care about um, diversity and having kind of, unique characters and a more unique uh cast and and stuff because they, they kind of understand like it really gives you um more interesting narrative options than oh no this hot character is feuding with this other hot character shucks what are we gonna do you know just challenging challenging to figure out what to think about this stuff you know mm, maxim tweeton says do you have one thing that you have discovered uh, or learned recently about how you see art or a thing that uh, composition or narrative recently oh my gosh yeah for sure i have also snoozy j says i feel like the challenge is to create an unconventionally attractive character that's also distinctive rather than a conventionally attractive one yeah it's true it's kind of like uh, i feel like you know um arcane did that pretty well like they kind of made 
you know, the strange characters, they still had appeal, um, but they were kind of, they were pushing it in certain areas, you know, like, uh, like having some elements that were contrasting with that's maybe unusual or uncommon. So I think that the team at Fortiche did a really great job with that stuff or, or a riot. I think that, well, the animation team did a great job because you can see how they kind of took the league characters um, and really uh, brought them to life in a unique way that like really allowed their characters to be felt. Oh yeah. Hades did, did that pretty well as well. Hades is, is just such a masterpiece, man. Uh, but yeah, going back to Maxim's question, just to answer that, one thing that I've discovered or learned recently, oh yeah, um, it's definitely been balancing blacks, like balancing the use of black in my work, um, kind of re trying to really reduce things uh, in in terms of uh, focus. So let's even take, for instance, this character on the left here. Like when I zoom out, there are certain areas that really are drawing your eye, um, and those areas are kind of the the hook shape here, right? Which uh, has this kind of form shadow or silhouette shadow. Uh, and then one kind of area here in the hair and then under the ear here. And uh, I didn't really include that in other places, maybe the back of the head a little bit. Um, but this is kind of generating sort of a lot of movement, continuous movement um, back into the face and around the face, even the bottom here, like uh, using a lot of those darks and then in the eye obviously the eye has like the highest area or the highest um rate of contrast than other areas of the body because you have the pupil and you have the eyelashes and then you have kind of the eyebrows and also the shapes around the eye are very distinctive but I didn't push like I didn't for instance add like a black nostril because compositionally that would make the image different it would make it into a different image but I want that to be more subtle but I want other areas to be pushed more as well. Even in the mouth, I didn't add any intense blacks or anything like that. So just be mindful of where you're placing your blacks and how you're drawing the eyes um, or drawing the eye of the viewer rather and also drawing the eyes of the characters that you illustrate too. But that, that was one thing that I learned recently that super helped me, even with design. Like um, there's a piece I was working on recently. Let's see if I can pull it up here. Um, yeah, I think that's what I found recently where I really wanted the, those blacks to be grouped, um, or the, the really heavy shadows to be grouped. So this is the kind of the keyframe essentially, uh, and it's focused on an airship for a project that, um, it was a world building project in the discord that we all worked on together that we're still kind of resolving. Um, it's in like the middle stage right now. Um, but you know, when I go black and white, even though it's kind of a mid-tone, um, like this area is kind of a mid-tone here, it still reads as this kind of dark shadow. And so you get this great grouping um, of essentially all of these darks across the space, like around here and here. And, you know, it's, it unifies the shape a lot more, even back here and fading into here too. And it allows those highlights to really pop and the details to kind of be in the mid-tones and whatnot. If I turn it, you know, back off of black and white, you can kind of see how that that energy is um, being communicated to, I think, a successful degree in this image. This is still a work in progress, by the way. Um, but yeah, so that's a that's a that's a fun thing I learned recently, or that I'm focusing on more in terms of comp composition. Specific, I guess. Hope that is helpful. Um, Simon says, "Why is the story set in a specific area where people are not diverse? Not every country like the USA." Yeah, I know. I mean, people are just, they're, they're just watching out for their markets. And the two biggest markets are, you know, the West and then China primarily, like China consumes a lot of media. So um, people will even omit uh, characters of color to appeal to the Chinese market because they don't, I mean, I guess they haven't found success with that demographic in China. They don't really have many, you know, uh, uh, dark people over there, I don't think so. Um, Snoozy J says most Hades characters are really attractive and at the same time none of them look like another uh, it's true that's true not really samey it's true very diverse designs and they're supposed to be greek gods so they're supposed to be these like objects of beauty anyway right so it's consistent with the narrative
but yeah so for instance like mobile games like mobile games are really worried about the chinese market it's like a huge huge part of their market um so they're they're really focused on that and uh they have a lot of preferences over there for what they want to see so it's it's interesting interesting Yeah, it's unfortunate that a lot of economic decisions can end up restricting an artist's expression. Like that's that I think is maybe the frustrating part, or even like driving forward or creating more, because um, the arts is how we solve that stuff, right? The arts is how we bring empathy and bring awareness of other people. That's like one of the most effective, proven ways in human history is through the arts. So, um, so yeah, I feel like uh, it's tough tough when the arts can't express those things because of market reasons and so then the market just stays the same because nothing ever changes it's mad on forge but you know there are again like a lot of great companies who are pushing pushing for better i mean diversity isn't even maybe the right word like not just representation but just better stories i think in general and again, like pointing to Arcane, I think they, they're doing a great job with that. At least to the degree that they can. Because one of their biggest markets that they want is is China, like for League. That's a huge market. So really uh really impressed with their diversity and, and how they're they're pushing it. Simon says that makes sense about money and market. I thought it was something about a story in Japan, nineteen hundreds old. It makes sense. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, of course, of course. No, it's like if you're like doing a hero shooter or something for some like you know B-rate studio, like they're gonna be like, don't make the character this color. Like they'll just tell you that. It's crazy. The stories I've heard, man. But hey, can't control people. All right, I don't know who this other guy is. I don't know what what his deal is. Let's see. This guy. How do we make him more interesting? What do we want his story to be? Maybe we push some shapes here. Speaking of unconventional design, maybe we can really create something compelling here, potentially. Oh, that's kind of cool. It's kind of sick, actually. And then we'll kind of crinkle his nose here a little bit. I feel like he maybe needs a hat. <laughs> you know what I mean? Kind of like a cool hat, possibly. <laughs> maybe we give him a cool hat. I don't know. Susie J says, I also think that's usually the creators who push the representation and authenticity and then later companies take credit. Oh yeah, that's 100% the truth. 100% the truth. Let's see, a hat, I don't know about the hat. What's the hat gonna accomplish here? Hmm. 
Hmm. Yeah, we'll probably finish up this guy. And then we'll probably call it a day. Oh, just one sec, guys. Alrighty, guys. Definitely went longer than I thought today. Uh, it is time for me to wrap up the stream. But this has been a fun one. Um, we talked about a lot of stuff. Jeez, opened up about um, <laughs> family support and all of that fun stuff and everything. It was definitely interesting. Hope that hope you guys got something out of it. Um, and then for that keyframe image we were working on, uh, I hope you guys learned something from that too. Um, yeah, just a reminder that um. This stream is not possible without the patrons. Thank you so much uh, to all the patrons for contributing. Uh, anyone can join. It's uh, the scout tier uh, for $3 and you guys get um, all the kind of future workshops that we're gonna do and the ones that I've uploaded so far, which currently is one, but will be more. Um, and then uh, and then you had just access to a great community. So super happy to see the uh, patrons continuing their support. You guys rock. And I think we can close it out here. Let me just add in some fun, some fun elements here. I always love adding in some intense kind of unique sort of lighting stuff at the end. Like there's some cool stuff you can do uh, with some like sheen, like, like doing something like that is kind of interesting. Maybe you want to do a little bit higher. Something kind of like, you know, you can get some interesting shapes in there just with, with light um, if you want to. So that's something that I, I like to explore here and there. So we can do that. And then even here, we can add in some of that same kind of cool shape. Along the edge. So that creates some cool, cool effects, draws the eye as well. And... Um, And yeah, we'll add in some shadow there, potentially, or something. That's kind of high on his head. Well, that's fun. This is a fun design. Yeah, that's pretty good. Righteous. I'll fix that later, probably. But yeah, thank you guys for keeping me company while I was workshopping that other piece and sticking around we did a couple fun heads from imagination here um and yeah once again super grateful to everybody who watches i really hope you guys get a benefit out of this and if you want to see more of anything that i do let me know what you want to see in the comments um that really helps out don't forget to like the video and you know if you're new here definitely subscribe and uh i will catch you guys on the next one let's read the chat before i hop off oh lovely hat let's go yeah dude take care everybody have a wonderful day and i'll catch you all later